education quality in urban areas compared to the suburbs. From the Encyclopedia of Education from 2002, if you are in the top economic quarter of the population, your children have a 76% chance of getting through college and graduating by age 24. If you are in the bottom quarter, however, the figure is 4%. That startling figure is what 11 million children in poverty are facing today, according to Reba Hader from American Progress 2021. They must face many adversities just to get the chance to have an education. They should be able to have the equal education to those who are not in poverty. However, that is not always the case. I have lived in Milwaukee, which is one of the most segregated cities in the state for all of my life. I have seen many different schools ranging from the public schools of MPS to the private schools that are funded greatly. I have also done more research for this speech specifically. For this speech today, I will inform you about the low quality of education in inner city areas of the U.S. compared to those in the suburbs and how the quality is affected by funding, teacher shortages, and insufficient teaching resources. Like to inform you of is the horrific underfunding of urban schools. The funding for schools in areas that are struck with poverty tend to be a lot lower than others. According to Gale's database from 2021, the U.S. Census Bureau data shows that 29 states provided less funding per student in 2015 than they did prior to the recession in 2008. The recession put the U.S. economy in an unbelievably bad place. Seven years later, schools were funded less than during that period. Schools in urban areas already have a challenging time finding funding for their programs, let alone if they are underfunded from the state. Also, according to Gale, educators protesting continued decreasing in public school spending. This is related to the teacher shortages everywhere, but especially in low-income areas that cannot afford to increase teachers' salaries. Problem with the funding of education in urban areas, there's a problem with the teaching shortages. Since there are many issues with funding in low income areas, they do not have enough money to get enough adequate teachers, hence, there are teaching shortages. The teachers were protesting because the underfunding of the education system does not allow a quality education. The teachers do not have enough money to have quality supplies or learning of new techniques in impoverished areas of the inner city, there's a trend that there are teacher shortages. Without enough teachers, classrooms become overcrowded and the teachers that are there have a harder time controlling the classroom environment. According to Martin Haberman, the teaching position in urban areas are the teaching positions that many traditionally prepared teachers are unwilling to take. Teachers that teach in schools in impoverished areas tend to be paid less and face many challenges that those in, that work in private schools in the suburbs don't have to face. So, teachers that are traditionally prepared and have experience in what they are teaching tend to not go for the positions in tough areas because they are eligible for different areas where they could be treated differently. Martin Haberman also stated that the typical teaching education graduate is a 22-year-old female who is monolingual and has little work or life experience. In addition to this, they are typically white. She will teach within 50 miles of where she herself attended schools. Since many teachers tend to teach closely to where she attended school, they are less likely to teach in a low-income area because they had enough money to go to the said school. In addition to this, there is also a teaching shortage of diversity in that community. Students need to have a role model to look up to that looks like them, and teachers tend to be those first role models. If most teachers are 22-year-old white females, then there is a good chunk of students who are not represented. A way to help fix this issue of teacher shortages would be student low forgiveness or better benefits for teachers who work in the inner city. they also have insufficient teaching resources. Insufficient teaching resources is a quite common occurrence in places with low economic status. According to Heather Newton from Urban Education in 2018, many urban schools do not allocate the money needed for individual teachers to purchase the resources necessary to accomplish their educational objectives. So the urban schools are at a disadvantage because they do not have the money to, for better supplies. The teachers that work in urban settings could try their best, however, if they are inexperienced, like the fact before stated, 
the said teachers may not have the experience to know how to teach without the necessary supplies. Also, according to Heather Newton, in many schools, photocopiers and other technological equipment are often inaccessible or non-existent. Teachers need to have enough copies of assignments, and since everything is online right now, urban schools are at a disadvantage because they cannot afford the same technology as suburban schools. Many suburban schools do not have to worry about if they will have enough supplies of something, whereas urban schools may not be able to provide what students need to learn. This is vastly different from education in suburban areas. The urban areas have a shortage of teachers, are underfunded, and they do not have sufficient teaching resources. However, with slight changes, there could be more equality in the quality of education in different socioeconomic areas, like better teaching benefits and better pay. The conditions of current urban area schools may not be the best. However, with slight alterations, there could be equal education throughout different areas.